disappointment of last year, how much does that mean? Um, yeah, it definitely means a lot to us. You know, going out last year to, to this team is definitely it's obviously a good feeling for us, but very disappointed with the result today. It's been a big week for you guys, and uh, tonight you got the job done despite the defeat today, but, I mean, I suppose you don't do it the easy way, do you? Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't think we started well. I feel like it wasn't the best performance from us. Um, but yeah, like you said, we're through, and obviously it's been a big week, so we've got to move on and forget about it. Were there some tired legs today, do you think? Um, I feel like, yeah, probably after a big game on Sunday, North London derby, I feel like looked a bit fatigued at times, but... Um, yeah, overall disappointed, but happy to go through. How was that second half to play in? Because that was when Olympiacos piled on the pressure when they got that goal quite early doors as well. Yeah, it was really difficult. You know, we knew they have really good players and stuff, and they're good on the counter. And obviously, I think when they got the goal, they really started to push on. And I feel like we never really took control of the game in the second half after that. But you know, we got the result in the end. So yeah. How much is this a learning experience for everyone in this squad? You know, there are young players like yourself, there are older, more experienced players. There's a, a blend of youth and experience here. But do you feel that you're still on this sort of trajectory? You're not the finished article yet, obviously. Yeah, definitely. I feel like we're, you know, we're all on a journey together. You know, like you said, there's young players and experienced players in the team and we're all trying to help each other every day. And, you know, we just got to keep going game by game and keep pushing through together. You're obviously recovering from the injury previously. You had a bit of a knock today, but you were able to carry on. You all right? Yeah, all good, man. I think just, you know, a little, little bit of fatigue and stuff. So I'm just going to recover well and we go again on Sunday. But it has been a big week for you as well, being called up to the England under-21s. How was that? What was, the, what was the moment like? Did you get a call? Did you get a text? Uh, yeah, I just got a message um, from one of the coaches and stuff. So obviously a really happy moment for me and my family. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to get, to get over there and get started. So uh, yeah. Who were you with at the time? Uh, I was with my mum and dad just at the time and I showed them the message. <laughs> Obviously, you know, it's a very Some proud Big moment. hugs all round? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've been waiting for this opportunity, so Everybody can't wait to get started. No, it's fantastic to see. Thank you so much, Mia. Well Thank done you. today. Thank you. And he thoroughly deserves that opportunity as well. Called after the England under-21s for the first time. And Karen, do you, do you feel it's really been this competition that, that's given him that platform to, to develop so well this season? I think he said he mentioned the word opportunity and he got his opportunity for the first team in this competition. And you'd say six months ago, you know, would he have been Arsenal's number one in the team sheet? Probably not. But he's worked his way into the team and he's, he's first on the team sheet now. He, he, what he does for the team, he's... Um, He's so key, he's done so well, and, and you're right, he burst on the scene from this, this competition. Won't be long till he's in the senior side, Martin, do you think? Well, you know I'm a huge fan of his. Uh, it was a little bit quiet tonight, but it has been a very difficult period for him and lots of games coming up, but I'm sure he'll come strong again on Sunday. Well, let's have a look at that second half then, Olympiakos getting the goal, but Martin, they, they came out the, the much more livelier side. Well, I mean, I'm not sure what went on in the team talk at half-time, but, it, I mean, even Gabriel there was getting bullied early on. Started really poorly the second half, and they just allowed Olympiakos to, to run at them, getting in behind that midfield, backing off, nobody really coming up to the ball. And we were saying here, weren't we, that Arsenal need to sharpen up. And then from the corner, no one really picking up, and it was a little bit of a let-off. And it was in those first few minutes that we thought, you know, come on, guys, let's get together. Are we just doing enough in the game? And Sobias, when he loses the ball here, I mean, it has to be Sobias again. He's been really unfortunate. He's been involved in, I think, the last four goals now that Arsenal have conceded in Europe. And nobody again comes up to the ball. And we're right next to this. We're just below it, or above it, sorry. David Ruiz has got to come up to his opponent there much quicker. There's absolutely no doubt about that, Karen. No, look, they started the second half really poor, you know, still in the dressing room, arguably. And you're right, at this point now, get back into a 4B compact. David Luiz, show down the line. Do not let him come inside whatsoever. Show him down the line, defend him, usher him out. But I thought it was a really lethargic and leggy performance, especially in the second half from Arsenal. And look, he got his bit of luck, it deflected in off Gabriel. But the principles, they got done on the counter-attack. They were too, they dropped off, they allowed the pressure on. And there was warning signs before that goal. And again, we keep mentioning it, and Mikhail Arteta said it as well in his pre-match interview, game management. Once you sense pressure building, you've got to know that something's coming. You've got to be compact and manage that situation before it happens. It's something we talked about a lot before the game, and, and giving the ball away in, in dangerous areas a problem again tonight. Well, again, party, you just come on. You think... Actually, Leno, don't give it to him in this situation. The same last week, he gave it to a sub that just come on in Sabayas. Or move it quicker, party. Move the ball. And it's a bit like 
table tennis ping pong in there going around and they just looked a bit out of sort in this situation and look you can we showed this exact same clip in the pre-run of the north london derby where they dropped off and dropped off and it was just allowing pressure and pressure and that's where arsenal probably are not at their best they're best when they're front-footed aggressive and he was like straight away i'm making changes how do you improve on that and stop that happening martin so, as a competitor you know if you've got your foot on top of your opponent if you let them off they become inspired they scored a goal and all of a sudden they're a different group and they look like they can do anything so you've got to kill them off early in that's what it's about and arsenal went into this game a little bit difficult for them very comfortable in the in the draw and thought okay let's just get through this just do enough and then you get found out things go wrong it gets a little bit sloppy um, and you saw that from the that's why i'm saying about you know sometimes that happens for a long season there's an awful lot of games as much as you want to st set really high standards you sometimes have to say okay we'll get we'll get past this tonight we're in the next round we look forward to the draw tomorrow morning and let's see what we get. If we get lucky, then Arsenal could go on. If you can win this competition, you win the cha you're win the you in the Champions League next season. You're back. It catapults you into the big time. No one will remember this, this game tonight against Olympiacos. It doesn't matter anyway. So that's what you do. Look forward now and you build upon this. But you can't keep slipping up. You can't keep making silly mistakes because later on in the competition, you'll get punished. How do you teach that? Can you teach that good decision making? Well, you, you can learn from it because it's been game after game and surely you go back and you analyse it and you say, this is a moment. You look at the time, you look at the what you're doing, what's your thought process in this moment and it's about staying cool and calm and collective. It's about, do I need to do this in this situation? But you go back to the, the analysis and you watch it all back and you remember how you're feeling. A lot of the time, I'm feeling under pressure, there's crosses coming in. Okay, we need to regroup. And that definitely comes with experience. And I do think there was an element of fatigue because it's been a massive period for Arsenal. Huge in, week. Exactly. And, and, and that comes with, with mental fatigue. And sometimes when there's mental fatigue, you make rash decisions and you don't rationalise parts of the game very well. You've got to set standards, though, Karen, haven't you? If you I'm in, If I'm in that group now, I'm... There were times there where it looked a bit lax. And, I, and this is a wonderful position where we're stood here. So does and, that come from the senior players then? I can actually see and feel and sense... And I, if I'm on that pitch there, I want to demand more from the people around me. Because I could just sense it was just, let's just do enough. No, no, no. You've got to, if you want to win something big, you know you keep saying it's a, they're big games. They're big games every week. You've got to go out there and win and represent the club. And that's what, that's what comes up at the weekend now, West Ham. I'm already now in that dressing room saying, guys, let's rest well because we've got a big game at the weekend. We can turn our season around. We keep winning and then everybody fears playing against Arsenal. If they know that you're a little bit of a soft touch on a difficult night, people sense that and take advantage of it. And it can't be allowed to grow. But nonetheless, sleep it, sleep it to one side and let's move towards the next game. Now, El Arabi with the goal. He gave Arsenal a real scare in the first half as well, Martin. You assumed that it was from a goal kick. I but did. And even the, Arsenal legends can make a mistake. Don't be afraid there. to make one. That's the biggest mistake you can make. The eagle-eyed Arsenal fans have realised that it wasn't a goal kick. So, of course, he's OK. He's, he can be offside from this goal kick, but I'm not so sure it's not a goal kick. Let's be clear on that. I'm not so sure the Arsenal players knew that. And I would say you still got to drop off and deal with it because otherwise it's just going to be in the back of the net. You can't get beaten with a straight ball like that. Drop off and deal with it, whether it's a goal kick or not, or whether it's just a free Martin, kick. what's the basic principles in that situation then? Be what? goal side. Stay goal side of your opponent. And it was, I mean, that's so sloppy. And Leno comes to the rescue because really he should be putting that away. And it can't happen, and that's one of those moments when if you're not really at it, you're not really geared up. I mean, we saw a Chelsea team, Dara mentioned a Chelsea team last night, and if you look at some of the defending there, they wanted to, to defend. They were swatting their forwards. They were looking for moments to defend when they didn't need to. There's an, a situation where Arsenal don't really want to defend it. Why not? So let's get the mindset right, first of all. Want to be a defender first and foremost. And there, that looked far too easy. Yeah, big save uh, from Leno there. Arsenal, though, had plenty of chances, didn't they? They could have made things a, a lot more comfortable for themselves tonight. They do, and they talk about, you know, kill the game off. They've had the chances. Um, you know, and this... Straight away from the get-go. I mean, it's, that's unfortunate coming off your own defender, but this tight touch here. I thought Erdegaard, when he came on, added a little bit more quality. I thought the shimmy there was good, but then that again summed up the whole night. But this one is the biggest moment, and I think Martin's right, and I agree, is that Aubameyang wasn't right tonight. It wasn't a case of tiredness because he wasn't playing at the weekend. He has to score that. Sometimes you have too much time as a striker, but 
for his standards, for his quality, he has to be finishing that, and that would have been game over. Karen, when he's running with that ball, he could actually have actually taken a different line. I actually feel when he's running through at that point, we're, uh, we're now looking at Martinelli. By the way, I thought Martinelli, again, did especially well when he came on. Uh, I don't see enough of him, but that was a lovely look at the way he flicks this. That is a fantastic bit. It's very difficult to do that. Martinelli, though, created the opportunity. But going back to the to the chance that Bamingham has, he's running from the halfway line. He could have changed that line. He could have actually gone more central to change the angle and perhaps come on to his stronger foot. Why he went with his left foot, I don't really know. But he must have felt confident to do so. Yeah, big chance for him. That, that would have finished it off. They are through anyway, though. Mikel Arteta already has an FA Cup and a Community Shield in his managerial trophy cabinet. I'm sure he'd love to add some European silverware as well. Let's hear from the Gunners boss with Reshman. Mikel, congratulations. It's been such a big week for Arsenal, hasn't it? What does it mean for you going through to the quarterfinals, not just in terms of what it means to keep your season alive, but psychologically as well? Yeah, obviously really happy to be through. Um, we had a tough opponent. We knew that. We knew that they weren't going to give up. I'm so happy to be through, but at the same time, we have to be fair with ourselves. And today we were nowhere near the levels that um, we have to set ourselves. They were two very different halves, weren't they, on Mikel? Yeah, but, well, I think um, we weren't stable with the ball. We gave so many easy balls away and, and we kept having transition moments because it's impossible when you just give the ball away. To have any structure or discipline in your shape, um, it's true that we miss a lot of chances. Uh, we concede one chance, I think, with the long ball with the keeper in the first half. And well, I think we created enough chance to win the game, but still, uh, we we're nowhere near the, the level that we should be at. Why do you think that is? Do you think it has been a tough week mentally and physically? Or do you it think has been a really demanding week, but I don't think uh, we have to use any excuses. We have refreshed the team. We have players that they were fresh, and uh, we know the importance of the competition. I think we started the game really well, actually. But then we started to give all away, and then that creates uh, insecurity and lack of stability. And um, it's something that we have to do much better. Is that what you saw immediately once they had scored? When you, you got Partey and Odegaard ready straight away, didn't you? Yeah, because we, we needed to keep the ball. At least keep the ball in the right areas and, and play some passes together and get together as a team. And not just keep giving the ball away with some transitions and, and defending open spaces because physically as well after the effort that we made uh, a few days ago becomes uh, really difficult to handle. We talked about game management pre-match mm -hmm. and that you had concerns during the North London derby in those final few moments. Mm -hmm. How frustrating was it for you watching from the sidelines at those moments where the team looked a little bit nervous? Well, yeah, but when we conceded the 1-0 after, to be fair, I think uh, we, we got better. We got more control and I can't think of any chances that, uh, that we conceded. But we put ourselves in a difficult position because we give them um, some belief um, and it's something that you cannot give to the opponent. Is that the frustrating part for you? Because... There have been times, but and in this competition as well, your sides show so much character, so much resilience. There are some really excellent patterns of play leading to attacks, yeah. but then you just let yourselves down in those little moments. Yeah, and that's what everything is done in the first half. We had four or five situations. We are completely open to play the next pass, and we are through a 1v1 situation, and we didn't, and then that leads to a counter-attack situation, and that breaks the team completely. Um, but again, we'll get better. Can you teach that? Is that just on the training ground or is that a mentality thing? <laughs> That's uh, when it comes to decision making and execution um, is a little bit more difficult, but we have to try to find a way. And the games don't end. Look, you've got West Ham next weekend, but then they do for a short break as well for the international period. I know you have some reservations about it, but how big is it to sort of end the, this particular period with a big result yeah, against West Ham? we need another win in the Premier League uh, to give ourselves a, a much bigger chance to after the break uh, and try to get a, a good run together and we will try to go there and, and win the game. Thank you very much, Mikel. Thank you. Thank you.